Oxford, the city of dreaming spires. But beneath the turrets and decorated stonework, there's an altogether more prosaic problem, traffic. Notice in the high street, there are hardly any private cars. What there is, is pedestrians, the student bicycles Oxford is famed for, and buses, lots of them. Over 50% of journeys into the city centre are made by bus, a huge number. In other towns, it's typically 12 to 15%. 150 buses an hour come through this street. This is all down to changes made in 1999 as part of the Oxford Transport Strategy, which had a very specific aim. There's very few access points into, into Oxford, and the historical nature of, of the city is that we won't ever be able to provide any additional access points. So it's trying to limit the number of uh, private cars that come into Oxford City. But we have another problem, which is that the, what we would call the trunk roads, the A34 um, and the A40, are also um, local roads for um, residents in Oxfordshire. So you have people nipping on and off of these uh, trunk roads. This is one of those trunk roads, Pear Tree Roundabout on the A34. It connects to two other roundabouts known together as the Northern Approaches. It's a bottleneck earmarked for improvement under an £88 million package called Access to Oxford. Then the traffic should move as freely as here. The Green Road roundabout has already been reconfigured, with one road running straight through the middle, earning it the name the Hamburger. It's brought queues down from 2 kilometres to 110 metres in the rush hour. This kind of thinking will be applied to the government money coming in 2013 for five transport schemes covering road and rail. Traditionally, major transport projects are a rural bypass or a new bus station. This is the first in the southeast of being a package approach to major transport planning. We have five elements to access to Oxford and rather than just be a single entity it, it is the package approach. So the Department for Transport are very keen to see how the package approach works as are we and it gives us a real chance to be at the, at the forefront of transport planning. Already established is Oxfordshire's park and ride system. The five park and rides keep up to 5,000 private cars out of the city every day. As well as local buses, passengers can also go to London, Gatwick and Heathrow from here. It's a big hit. Yes, I think it's brilliant. It saves all the parking in Oxford. I've used it quite a lot. We've driven through Oxford before and tried to find places to park. It's almost impossible. It's the first time I've used it in Oxford. Um, but I have used it in other places before and I find it very good, very good indeed. It's quite a cheap way to travel actually. People are not taking up the idea of uh, parking and riding rather than travelling in. But they need more spaces here, looking at it. Oxford was the first place in the UK to have park and ride in 1973 and it's very well embedded in people's mentalities. That means though that this car park at least at Thornhill is full by 9.45 in the morning. It's for that reason that it and other park and ride facilities here are being upgraded. This brick shed used to be the terminal but this is the new one. It'll be light, warm and modern with a cafe, toilets and security facilities. This kind of successful transport project in part persuaded the Department for Transport to approve Oxfordshire's bid for the access to Oxford funding. Only 14 of 188 bids were successful. The next train to arrive at platform 2 is the 1536 service to Edinburgh. Oxford Rail Station will also be improved and extended in 2010 to 11. At the moment, trains must wait for other trains to turn around north of the station. Freight tracks will be upgraded for passenger trains and a new platform built here on part of the car park for London trains to terminate and depart. We suffer significant delays from trains that cross over the, the layout at Oxford. They Basically they, they, they move from one uh, line over all the lines to the other platform and that imparts significant delay on trains uh, running north to south so it will deliver a, a major benefit in the performance of Oxford station. Six million tourists visit Oxford every year and resident numbers are also set to soar with the building of 55,000 new homes in the county over the next 20 years under the South East Plan. It's hoped the access to Oxford transport projects will manage the increase in traffic that will come with that growth.